Christmas is a high festival of Christianity and a time for reflection and contemplation. So let's take a little more time and reflection than in the shorts on Christmas traditions. If you've already seen the shorts, you'll know that a larger part of the Christmas traditions originate from the territory of the Holy Roman Empire or the areas that are now part of Germany. Let's go through the topics again at your leisure. Take a cup of tea or hot chocolate and sit back. Advent is a time before Christmas and begins in the church with Vespers on the eve of the first Sunday in Advent or, in calendar terms, on the 1st of December each year and always ends on Christmas Eve. As the first Sunday in Advent can be at the end of November, we begin our customs with the Advent wreath. There may have been such a thing among the Therians as early as the 16th century, but the modern Advent wreath is attributed to the embedically Lutheran theologian Johann Hinrich Wiechern in 1839. He hung a wreath with four large white candles for Advent Sundays and 19 small red candles for all other days in the prayer room of the Raues House in Hamburg, a kind of children's home for children in precarious situations. This type of wreath is also called a Wiechern wreath. Every evening one of the candles was lit according to the day this taught the children how long it was until Christmas as well as how to count. This wreath developed into the modern wreath with four candles, in which a candle was lit every Sunday in Advent, usually in the morning. Just like the children's poem Advent, Advent, ein Lichtlein brennt, erst eins, dann zwei, dann drei, dann vier, dann steht das Christkind vor der Tür sometimes supplemented by the lines Und wenn das fünfte Lichtlein brennt, dann hast du Weihnachten verpennt. Sometimes the candles are also placed in a row. As with all open flames, make sure that the candles on the advent wreaths are not left burning unattended. This has often caused house fires. Nevertheless, unlike the Christmas tree, which we come to next week, here are always real candles on the advent trees. Christian children in Germany rejoice every morning from the 1st of December at the latest because there are 24 little doors in the advent calendar. In contrast to the Wiechenkranz or the advent wreath, which may already be lit at end of November, advent calendars always take into account the calendar year and the 24 days of December. In my youth there were usually little doors with a small chocolate figure behind them, but today you can always find calendars with toys from Lego, Playmobil, Barbie and many more. In my parents' day there were often just little pictures behind the doors or the parents made the calendars themselves and hung up 24 little bags with something hidden inside. If you like puzzles you can also find calendars where you first have to find out which door is it today. And there are also advent calendars for adults with adult toys or alcoholic drinks inside. The first calendars directly for this purpose date back to 1851. Also even before that in the Lutheran tradition for example 24 pictures were gradually hung up while sometimes in Catholic households 24 straws were gradually placed in the crib. There was also a variant from Scandinavian traditions in which a candle with 24 divisions was lit and left to burn piece by piece. In some towns 24 windows are prepared accordingly in large houses or sometimes 24 citizens in a neighborhood prepare one window each, often with reading of a story as a kind of living advent wreath. If we now move on, we come to December the 6th, St. Nicholas Day. On St. Nicholas Day, there is also a small gift for children. December 6th marks the anniversary of the death of St. Nicholas of Mühle. The saint is said to have given presents for three poor virgins, for example. 
For this reason, people in Germany placed clean boots outside the door the evening before, which then miraculously filled with sweets, nuts and mandarins in the morning. Until the 15th century, all presents were given on this day, but this is no longer the case in Germany. Due to the rejection of the veneration of saints during the Reformation, gift-giving was moved to Christmas in Protestant regions. This was then also adopted in Catholic regions. Now there is at most a little something. In kindergartens it is common for a man to dress up as Saint Nicholas, who often has a white beard, but unlike the red Santa Claus, always wears a bishop habit and carries a shepherd's crook. He then brings small presents. Sometimes Saint Nicholas also comes to sport clubs or homes and reads from a golden book about how good the children have been and sometimes also how good the adult has been. Children then learn a song or a poem and recite it to Saint Nicholas. However, if the parents don't know a song or a poem, it looks bad for them. An example. Nikolaus sei unser Gast, wenn du was im Sacke hast. Hast du was, so lass dich nieder. Hast du nichts, so pack dich wieder. Sometimes the Nicholas also has a companion who then presents the evil part as a counterpart to the good Saint Nicholas. In parts of southern Germany, Austria and parts of Eastern Europe, this is the Krampus. He often has changed that he rattles dangerously or is even said to take away bad children. In northern and central Germany, he is accompanied by Knecht Ruprecht, who carries a rod made of twigs with which he spangs bad children or their parents. Depending on the region, there are variations in the names and behaviors of the accompanying figures. Let's go outside the door. Of course, there are Christmas markets in Germany. The best known are perhaps the Nuremberg Christkindl market, which has been running since 1530, the Dresden Striezelmarkt, which is a hundred years older, dating back to 1434, and has a world largest step pyramid in the Ore Mountains, or the Dortmund Christmas city with the world's largest Christmas tree which is however made up of different trees. The Christmas market started this year on 23rd of November in Dortmund or on 1st of December in Nuremberg. Those who want to combine it with Middle Ages We'll also find medieval Christmas markets such as the Staufer Saga Christmas market in Schwäbisch Gmünd. In addition, every large city has its own Christmas market and even small towns and some villages have a small Christmas market at least on one or two Advent Sundays. But sometimes a large city also has several markets. In Munich, for example, there are said to be 40 different Christmas markets. The historical basis lies in the normal markets and sales fairs, some of which were held in winter to provide the population. In the 14th century, the customs of admitting special craftsmen such as confectioners, toy makers and basket weavers emerged. The oldest record of this is from 1296 in Vienna or from 1310 in Munich when a St. Nicholas market is mentioned. Even today, toys and Christmas tree decorations, as well as sweets and typical food and drinks, are omnipresent along with Christmas lights and appropriate music. A thing that is often eaten and prepared at Christmas markets are potato pancakes, often with apple sauce or regionally with sugar beet syrup. Potato pancakes or potato fritters can be found in many European cuisines, but they are particularly popular at Christmas markets. Malt wine is served here as a warm drink, spiced wine were already known in the ancient times and were also popular in the Middle Ages. A recipe from central Germany is known to date back to 1834. Various non-alcoholic versions are now also served. Candle arches have been made in the Erzgebirge or mountains since 1740. The semicircle symbolizes the entrance to a mine as many mines were operated in the Erzgebirge in keeping with the name. 
initially made of metal and using Christian methods, the arches have been made of wood since the Second World War and featured traditional mining and Christmas motifs. They are used for Christmas lightning with wax or electric candles. As mining declined in the 18th century, people needed a new source of income, which they found in woodwork, as the area is richly forested. In the 18th century, incense candles were produced, which initially burned openly. Then, in the middle of the 19th century, incense burners were produced. The incense candle is placed in the lower part of the two-part figure, and the smoke escapes through the open mouth. Since 1870, the traditional nutcrackers have also been produced here, which with their large mouths were intended to represent figures of authority. These were typically a king, soldier, gendarme or a forester. The Christmas pyramids, which were also made here, are a kind of small form of a göbel, which used to be used in the mines. Now the hot air from the candles moves the rotating rod, which used to be done by a horse. Other things are also made in the Erzgebirge, such as an angel or native figure, which are made in a special way. Hoop turning was invented around 1800. A wooden tire is turned into shape and at the end the individual figures are sawn off the tire. While the religion and its customs were frowned upon in socialist GDPR, the Erzgebirge and its carving were important for exports and foreign currency. The term end-of-year figurine is said to have been used in the production and packaging of Christmas figurines. Year-end figurines with wings for angels and year-end figurines without wings for Santa Claus. But we'll take care of Santa Claus and other customs next time and in the next shows. Thank you for watching and have a peaceful Advent season.